So in front of me here, I have a knife that I've been pretty excited about since uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works announced it. Um, and this is, you know, part of the Queen Made USA series or the USA Made Queen series. Um, and unlike this knife, I don't think there's any controversy controversy surrounding it. Um, and this is a Queen Knives box here, or tin. It comes in this nice tin. So if you're somebody who really likes having, you know, boxes around, um, you know, it's a really nice box. Um, and you can see here, I got the red smooth bone version. Uh, but let's go ahead and open this up here. You open the tin, the knife is wrapped in some brown paper. It doesn't appear to be wax paper, but just some sort of brown paper. Um, there's the knife there. Um, this is Uniwrap. Treated with corrosion inhibitors. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Okay, so something similar to what the idea of wax paper is. And you get a little paper in here. Basically just says that Queen Knives have a warranty and everything. Um, yeah, you know, typical knife stuff. Uh, but anyway, let's pack all this away in the tin here. Um, because you know, I like to keep uh, boxes for my uh, higher-end knives anyway. Uh, but anyway, this is the Queen uh, Jumbo Trapper in this red smooth bone here. Um, it's fit and finish looking at it right out of the box. I was very impressed with it. This is an $80 knife. I paid $80, $80 for this. I could have gotten the Stag version for 100 I just didn't want to spend that much right now. Uh, due to the fact that I am moving and everything and, um, you know, um, so due to all that, I didn't want to spend the money to get the stag version. So I figured the red smooth bone would be nice and it does look pretty good. Um, the die job on it's fairly, um, even, although this side's a little darker than this side, not the end of the world or anything. Uh, but like with most jumbo trappers, you got yourself a, um, what I would call a drop point or a straight back blade. Some people might call a Skinner blade or something. And it does look like there's some blade wrap there, which is good to know, I guess. So if you let the blade slap shut, it'll slap the back spring. That's some pretty significant blade wrap, actually. So that's a little disappointing. I didn't notice that before. Uh, but this blade here, which I guess they call the main blade, locks open. It's got this really, like lock that I thought was going to be incredibly intrusive, but honestly holding it, it's really not that bad. Um, obviously you can't get your finger much more for much more, uh, forward than that, but you know, the lock doesn't really bother me as much as I thought it would. And it locks the blade pretty good. Um, you can't push the blade much at all. Maybe just a, the slightest bit. Does it have any blade play? So this blade has no blade play that I can feel, so that's good. Um, I'm going to have to get used to using the lock here. I'm not used to having a lock. It does have a half stop, and I guess since I see that it has blade wrap, I'll ease that blade shut. I guess I'll have to put a piece of leather in there and sharpen out the blade wrap out of that main blade, so that's annoying. Uh, and you get this massive uh, spade blade, which I think also has some blade wrap. Um, so I'm going to have to put some leather in the... Uh, spots to stop it from getting blade wrap. You can see there it does rub the liner a little bit just from me opening it, probably putting pressure on the blade, probably pressing against that metal liner. Not the end of the, not the end of the world for me, um, but you may want to be more careful when you're opening the blades to this knife. Um, but this is a big spay blade. It's done very well. This knife is very reminiscent of the uh, Great Eastern Cutlery 23. Um, I didn't pull mine out to show you, but, you know, it's very similar quality, honestly. It's not quite as good as Great Eastern Cutlery. The action's good, but not like... It's not like a bear trap like a lot of Great Eastern Cutlery knives are. The action is pretty good, though. Um, and I don't want to let the blades slap close because of the blade wrap. But the action on the main blade's better. I'll let this one slap shut once. I mean, I'm going to have to fix the blades anyway. This one's a little bit gritty. I think I could probably fix that with some mineral oil. If I maybe quick here, I'll just grab some quick here. 
Um, you can get these little dropper bottles from the Dollar Tree if you have one near you. Little glass dropper bottles. Put some mineral oil in them. Mineral oil, of course, you can find in any like health aisle at like Walmart or anywhere. And that's what we use to lubricate knives because mineral oil is food safe, of course. And it's not going to damage your knife or anything. Um, so I like to use mineral oil to help lubricate the uh, joints of a knife and everything. Just kind of get that worked in a little bit there. Much less gritty. Yeah. Action's all right. Um, but yeah, I'll have to work it a little bit to get some of that grit out of there. The shield does not appear to be pinned, uh, which is a little disappointing, but I mean, $70 isn't quite great Eastern cutlery prices. So I can't say I was necessarily as expecting it to be pinned, but I am a little disappointed that it's not pinned. Uh, blade centering is really good on this one. It's not perfect, but it's a traditional pocket knife. I don't really expect it to be perfect. It just has to be good. Um, appears to have steel pins, uh, brass outside liners. The middle liner that has the lock on it is steel, it appears. Seems like the hafting on the back of the knife here. Maybe that was just the shadows. It didn't look like it was even, but it may have just been the lighting playing a trick on me there. Um, nickel silver, uh, bolster and cap. The shield here has the good old queen. A Q with the knife through it there. Shield looks really good. Knife overall looks really good. And unlike that other queen knife, this one is stamped Queen USA. So there shouldn't be any kind of controversy about this one. That being said, I don't know about these still. I mean, like I said, Smoky Mountain Knife Works said they were made in the United States. So I'm just taking their word for it, but it's not stamped Queen USA. It's just stamped Queen. Um, and these two knives appear to be made by two different makers, but they also might not be. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. But um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, this is still a USA made Queen. It's just not quite as nice as the run they did now. Um, and the run they did now includes these jumbo locking trappers. This is the Queen Cutlery number 101. I don't know if the, they also did a regular trapper and I don't know if that was the 100 or whatever. You can see right there, it says 1095 carbon steel. So I'm happy about that. And I have to say there was some spotting on these blades already, some pepper spots. Be careful closing that blade so I don't get that blade wrap any worse. I think it was on this blade that I saw the pepper spots. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show them on camera. Right there's one. So you can see it came with that little pepper spot on the blade there. There was a couple of them. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. There's there's some more there. Right. I think I got to point it out because the blade's too shiny. Uh, but yeah, some, some little pepper spots on the blade. Not a huge deal for somebody like me who's just going to use the knife and throw it in my pocket and it's going to develop uh, more pepper spots and patina and all that. So not a huge deal for somebody like me, but if you are a full-blown collector who just wants to, you know, have these knives and keep them in their tin and hope that they uh, gain value and everything, you may want to uh, keep that in mind. Check your knife over before you just uh, put it away forever and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to sharpen out that, uh, that wrap in the blade there, which is once again, really bad and a little disappointing. And I guess I'm going to have to put some, uh, leather down in there to help try to prevent that. Like I do with all of my knives that have blade wrap. Um, yeah, so I'll do that and then I'll probably end up throwing this knife in my pocket because I'm pretty happy with it and I'm excited to, uh, give it a try carrying it. Um, it is going to take a while to get used to the fact that it does have a lock because I'm not used to that with uh, these knives. I'm used to them just being slip joints like the other queen here that I showed, um, Jumbo Trapper here. These are still good knives. I don't know if great, I don't know if Smoky Mountain Knife Works still has these or not, um, but if they still have some of these available, I wouldn't hesitate to buy one of these either because they're they appear to be pretty well made. At least this one is. Uh, my saw cut one was a little bit less well made, but 
They still seem to be pretty good knives. I haven't heard anything super awful about them, other than the whole controversy about whether or not they're actually made in the United States and everything. Uh, and I'm just taking Smoky Mountain Life Works word for that. Uh, but this one definitely is made in the United States. They very proudly uh, display that and let everybody know that. And it is stamped on the tang stamp here, tang, Queen USA. Um, so they're very proud of this one being made in the United States. I'm guessing they saw some criticism of this knife, um, not having anything on it that said it was made in the United States, um, and learned from that and decided to really make sure that people knew that this one was made in the United States um, so there wouldn't be any weird controversy on the internet. Um, but anyway, this is the Queen Jumbo Trapper, the Queen Cutlery number 101. 1095 carbon steel. This is the smooth red bone version. And I'm pretty happy with it. If I had some more, if they have some trappers sitting around uh, for a while, I may pick one of the regular trappers up. I'm just not a huge trapper person. I much more prefer the jumbo trapper and pretty much literally any other uh, pattern over a regular trapper just because it's, it's just not my thing. I have, I think, four or five trappers and I don't ever carry them they're just kind of sitting in a in a you know box somewhere I don't ever really carry them or anything um, but I really do enjoy the jumbo trapper just because of the pure ridiculousness of it and everything and I think the giant spade blade on these knives is a lot more usable than the little spade blade on a regular trapper uh, because I feel like the spade blades on these is big enough that you can use it to um, cut food and stuff, whereas the regular spade blades on a trapper, I feel like are only good for like spreading butter and stuff on bread. Um, but yeah, really happy with this knife overall. Uh, the only really disappointing thing about it is that blade wrap there. I guess they could have had the kick a little bit higher, although you would have run out of room eventually. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what comes from these new uh, USA made queen knives. I'm hoping they'll do a, like a Stockman and a Barlow, um, some stuff like that. I would love to have them produce just a bunch of Barlows and different handle materials and everything because I really love Barlows. I would also love to see a Stockman. Um, I'd love to see a lot of patterns. A Daddy Barlow would be cool too. A Coke bottle, I'd love a Coke bottle. Large Coke bottle, that is. Um, just, I, I would love for them to just produce a whole bunch of patterns in these and just keep producing them like Case does, but with quality like this. Because this is almost rivaling Great Eastern Cutlery for a lot less money. And for right now, at least they're staying on the shelves for at least a little bit. Um, so yeah, really happy with this knife for the uh, price and everything. Happy with the knife overall. Um, other than the little bit of blade wrap, but that just happens sometimes. I have Great Eastern Cutlery knives that have blade wrap as well. So that's just something that happens. I'd also love to see a moose produced in this pattern or produced by them since we're talking about it. I'd love to see a moose uh, because that's one of my favorite knife patterns up there with the Barlow and everything. Uh, but anyway, um, this has been the Queen Cutlery Co. number 101 Jumbo Trapper or jumbo locking trapper. I'm not sure what you want to call it. Um, and I'm extremely happy with it, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for Queen Cutlery Co. now that it appears that they're going to be making knives in the United States. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a good day.